painting pushes back. It doesn't want to be led. It wants to lead. So you have to take control over the painting because the painting really wants to be controlling you. Geographically, we're located here in Prince Edward County. And uh, the last 25 years, I've run my own little ad agency in Toronto, uh, which was a virtual company. So in fact, I, I would go out and get work from clients and, and then I would do creative, I would art direct, and I would hire freelancers to do my production work. So that as a totally different kind of, of uh, expression of, of design and, and art than what I was doing in my quote day job. Although evenings and weekends, I was always painting. And so three years ago, we moved here and I closed down my ad agency and I'm painting full time here. Well, historically, uh, my great grandfather was a painter in Scotland and owned a gallery there. And so genetically, there's a certain amount of history. My father was a painter. And so from the time I was 10, 11, 12, I would, I would watch my father paint. I went to uh, art college in high school and then subsequently went on to study further from there. We had 30 periods of art a week, five different art teachers a day, and then my whole career has been as, as a graphic designer, commercial artist, illustrator, and painter. I have a, a love of the natural world. The fact that I'm painting big skies or painting atmospherics with a lot of light, whether it's seascapes or cloudscapes, I'm moved by the interaction of light and how it affects water in all its different forms. So really whether it's a cumulus cloud or a misty day in Scotland or a big sea north of Boston, I'm interested in the interaction, the interplay between um, light and water and the atmospherics that it, it creates. I, mean, I enjoy that naturally, just walking or hiking in that kind of environment and, and then to come back and try to capture that somehow in the studio is, is fulfilling and there's a lot of enjoyment to that. In my early years in Western Canada, I grew up in a situation which is aligned in some ways to what you see in the news media today with what's called the residential schools. It was a very similar kind of atmosphere where uh, I grew up in a fairly uh, abusive sort of background. And, and as a result of that, my work reflects that to a great extent. That there's lots of storm clouds and so forth, but that's been replaced with a lot of light in more recent years. Part of my journey is reflected definitely in the work that I do. Making art in, in various forms has been my career. It's been my living. There's certainly an emotional connection to it. It's uh, rewarding personally on a spiritual level. It's rewarding on a cultural level. It's rewarding when somebody comes in and enjoys a piece. It gives them joy. It adds a layer to their life. I mean, it's very rewarding that way. I'm moved with strong, dramatic shapes and the contrast between light and darkness. I'm really bored with blue skies, frankly, and that is because of my story, which has been all about difficulty and struggle and depression coming out of that, that childhood life. So I'm, I'm reflecting that in my paintings, but I'm, I'm really hopefully doing that now in a much more positive way. The storms are moving away. I mean, they're still coming toward me, but they're moving off. Endurance, perseverance is a, a component to success expresses your best and so I would challenge people to take as many courses that they can and learn as many techniques as they can because those become the toolbox that allow you to actually express yourself.